Welcome to the second episode of the Curious Cat podcast. Since Halloween is just around the corner, we thought it would be fun to do an episode that's all about cat goddesses, magic, and uh, basically trace the history of cats with humans in different civilizations. I am Binda and uh, well, I don't know where my host Tatiana is, but I do know a spell that might work. Hocus pocus and a lot of meows. Turn back into Tatiana now. Hey guys, yes, I was taking a nap right before today's episode. Well, throughout history, cats have always been associated with magic and yes, they have been born born with the supernatural. But today, we are going to go one step further and trace down their association with humans and why they have been misunderstood all throughout history. You know what? You don't look like you're in character for this episode. So, <laughs> we're just going to get her into character and I know a spell for that. That's better. And I have this just to even things out. So just go ahead and tell us everything you know about the oldest cats known to humans. So the oldest cats probably appeared about 30 million years ago. Now Proailorus is the name of the oldest known cat whose fossil was excavated from France and Mongolia. Now cats became domesticated by humans during the Neolithic period which is 7000 to 1000 BC mostly because humans started settling down and you know agriculture started coming into power. So now when that happened also pests and rats started coming in due to which humans realized that the cats were helpful and saved their grain from being eaten. So that's primarily how cats came to be domesticated. It also helped that they looked cute. Definitely. I think that was a bigger factor than the <laughs> grains for sure. Um, all domesticated cats that we see today have in fact descended from the African wild cat called Felis sylvestris libica. When humans first started agriculture some 10,000 years ago in the Fertile Crescent, which is the boomerang-shaped region in the Middle East, uh, it's home to some of the oldest civilizations known to humans. Um, it's actually called the Cradle of Civilization. Um, And this area was the birthplace of a number of technological inventions, including writing, the wheel, uh, agriculture, as well as the use of irrigation. Wow, that's amazing. That's really amazing. Um, Now, one of the most important Neolithic civilizations has got to be the ancient Egyptian one. And we're going to start talking about, well, she's (laughs) wearing a Neferkiti t-shirt from, where is it? Curious Cat Company. Shop it on our website. Product placement. <laughs> okay. So uh, the Egyptians uh, worshipped elements of nature and a lot of animals. Dogs were valued for their ability to protect and hunt. But cats were the most special. Of course. Without a doubt. Obviously. Uh, Egyptians believed that cats were magical who housed them. Wow, now that's really amazing. So also several ancient Egyptian deities were depicted and sculptured with cat-like heads such as Mafdet, the first known cat-headed deity in uh, ancient Egypt protector against snakes, scorpions and other evils. Yeah. The domestic cat was regarded as the living incarnation of a goddess called Bastet wow. or Bast. She had several names. Uh, She primarily protected the household from rats, pests and diseases associated with women and children. But there was another goddess who is very similar to Bastet that people always get confused with and her name was Sekhmet. Wow. But the primary difference between Bastet and Sekhmet is that Bastet is more of a soft, feline sort of a goddess. Feminine. Feminine. Whereas Sekhmet is the warrior goddess and protector of the pharaohs and she's often depicted with the head of a lion. Oh, wow. That's, 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 that's the amazing. So to honor these treasured pets, wealthy families dress them in jewels and fed them treats fit for royalty. I think that's something we still <laughs> do today. So, well, when cats died, they were mummified. Okay, so as a sign of mourning, the owners actually shaved their eyebrows what? off. <laughs> They shave their eyebrows off and continue to mourn until their eyebrows grow back. Cats were so special that those who kill them or even harm them by accident were sentenced to death. Whoa. Also, another thing is that the export of cats from Egypt was forbidden and the penalty was death. 
they had a special task force at their ports to make sure no cat had been smuggled abroad. Clever crews and captains have found some way around this law. However, as a cat bound up transported from Egypt to Greece, Rome and Northern Europe, the sailors most likely responsible for this were the Phoenicians. And uh, these guys were the master seafarers and most important traders of the ancient world. Wow. The end of the Egyptian age overlapped with ancient Greece. And even though cats were worshipped in Egypt, house cats were rather rare in ancient Gre- Greece and Rome. So now, although be- weasels were far more commonly kept as the ideal rodent killing pets, cats are rarely mentioned in ancient Greek literature. True. I've never seen a Greek cat goddess or never. any cat it's, mentioned in a it's poem. It's usually a human, yeah. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> cats eventually displaced the ferrets as a pest control system because they were more pleasant to have around a house and were more enthusiastic hunters. Definitely. I, we can agree with that. So one of the uh, very rare and popular myths uh, that uh, you can find in uh, from the ancient Greek texts is one that would eventually go on to determine the brand image of cats for several hundreds of years uh, thereafter. And it features the famous hero Heracles or Hercules. So his immortal father, which is Lord Zeus, seduced the mortal princess Alcmene and Hera, who was the wife of Zeus, obviously she got really jealous about this. I mean, it's legit. (laughs) And she attempted to kill this uh, princess but the princess's maidservant thwarted Hera's plan. Uh, she got upset. Uh, she's a you know she's a goddess after all, and how dare a maidservant <laughs> thwart her plan? So uh, she got really angry, and uh, what Hera did was uh, she punished this maid, this over smart maid, by transforming her into a cat, and she sent her to the underworld to serve Hikate, uh, who is the goddess of magic witchcraft, night, moon, ghosts, and necromancy. And that is how cats eventually came to be associated with witchcraft, magic, evil, and all of these things. Obviously, the story was handed down the generations almost verbally. And uh, eventually, the whole of medieval Europe came to be associated, uh, came to associate cats with uh, witchcraft and magic. The medieval Catholic Church also helped strengthen these beliefs to discourage faith in uh, religions of older civilizations such as that of ancient Egypt, Greece and Rome. But you know what, Uh, let's come back to Europe in a bit and explore the Orient for some cat stories. So starting with India first, surprisingly cats have only made small guest appearances in Indian mythology. Now while in ancient India kept domestic cats as a pest control mechanism for protecting their grains, cats haven't been raised to the godly status in India. That's true. I've never heard of a Indian cat goddess in the form of some sort of warrior <laughs> princess. Um, anyway, let's spin the globe and jump to Japan where cats have superstar glamour status even today. And Hello Kitty, arguably Japan's most famous export, possibly next to Doraemon, is only the tip of the iceberg. So the first domestic cat came to Japan around 550 AD, uh, the time when Buddhism was introduced, uh, and possibly to protect sacred texts of Buddhism uh, from the damage mice could cause. So the first recorded name of a cat in Japan is Miyobu no Otodo, which means chief lady in waiting of the palace. Now the cat had a special rank at the imperial palace and ladies in waiting were placed in charge of looking after her. Ancient records from those days tell of cats at the imperial palace having a red collar with a white tag and fooling around with strings. I think that's something that happens even today. (laughs) So according to one Japanese legend, a lord was seeking shelter under a tree and he saw a cat waving its paw at him. Now intrigued by that, he walked towards the cat when suddenly a lightning bolt struck at the exact same spot where he was sitting. Now, the Lord believed that his good fortune was because of the cat's actions. Hence, the beckoning hand became a symbol of good luck. Oh, like like 
this. No, like this. Like this. Oh, yeah. like clawing. Like, I think yeah, he was like clawing <laughs> the Lord, not beckoning him. <laughs> no. So, um, in fact, Kyoto, Japan's former capital, originally was the center of high culture and aristocracy. Very true. And the city was home to prominent silk producers who believed that cats kept the number of rats to a minimum and enabled them to work continuously to produce the finest silk possible. Wow, they amazing. became popular as a lucky charm, obviously, because their silk was saved and business boomed and the money rolled in. Even today, in fact, business owners put the Maneki Neko statues in front of their shops in the hope that the moving paw will bring in customers. Like, come in, child. Come in, child, or I'm going to claw you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's like pretty awesome. Now, Japan also has a lot of shrines and temples dedicated Whoa. to Kuki to cats. That's proper <laughs> goddess worship, even in today's age. Yes. So, Tashiro Jima Island is known as the Cat Island. Now, cats came to welcome the boats at the port. Now, many cats wait patiently around a fishing port for the fishermen to return. I think I want to be a fisherman on this island. I'm going to move there. <laughs> Now, Aoshima Island is also known as a cat island with 15 residents for, wait, wait for it, for every 100 cats. Damn it. <laughs> That's amazing. Wait. I'm going to move to Japan. <laughs> so, the island has recently become increasingly popular as a tourist spot, especially among cat lovers. Obviously, we are going. Yep. So Japan is clearly obsessed with cats and we wish other countries would, well, take a leaf out of their book. I'm going to travel back to Europe. Uh, but you know what? It's time for her to change again, right? That's more like it. Part two of this. Okay, so we're now back to Europe. And uh, let's take a look at the situation in the time of the Ottoman Empire, uh, which is around late 13th century. Uh, with Istanbul as the capital, uh, which was earlier known as Constantinople. Now, domestic cats were revered in Islam because they are admired for their cleanliness. And in fact, Prophet Muhammad is said to have had a pet cat named Muadza. And this is also primarily why most countries which were ruled over by the Islamic Ottoman Empire have loads of cats even today, including wow. Turkey, where you'll find dozens of cats of every color on every alley. Definitely. I totally agree with you. But, well, meanwhile, in Central Christian Europe, Pope Gregory IX decreed that it was obligatory for cats to be exterminated on site. So he declared that they were representatives of Satan and accused of practicing witchcraft. Hence, which old ladies were also burned at the stakes inside bags stuffed with cats. I think you're at risk, they, considering they burned old ladies with their cats. <laughs> you before me. <laughs> okay. The number of rats multiplied and a series of deadly plagues outbreak outbreaks occurred between the year 1300 and the 1500s. So. Serves them right, man. Who kills cats? God. So cats in a way were the insurance against the plague. But we know how that happened. Now, however, unlike Central Europe, cats in lands governed by the Ottomans were cared for and fed in homes and in shops. Now, this kept that particular area safe during the plague. Wow. That's what you get for loving cats, guys. Yeah. No epidemics. And that should teach us something right now. Maybe if everybody adopted a cat right now, this coronavirus thing might just go away. I don't know. <laughs> COVID is not because of rats. God knows. Anyway, you never know. You know, cats bring good luck and whatnot. So, while cats were seen as evil in medieval Europe, the seafaring nations who started sending loads of ships for discovery of new lands and spices and exotic treasures as well as the trading ports, they saw cats as protectors of the precious cargo supplies on their ships and uh, because they help ward off pests and rats, obviously. So they thought that cats were, uh, they possessed miraculous powers and they could protect ships from dangerous weather. Another popular belief was that cats could start storms through magic stored in their tails. Wow. Uh, but some of these beliefs are actually rooted in reality. 
cats are able to detect slight changes in weather hmm. because their ears are really sensitive and it allows this is also what allows them to land on their feet upright when they fall low atmospheric pressure which is what happens when you have stormy weather often makes cats really nervous and restless so cats naturally react to these barometric pressure changes and if you are a keen enough observer you can detect this unusual behavior and maybe predict an incoming storm this association of cats with magic has been reflected in some of the most popular creative works beginning with macbeth in the middle ages to uh, today's harry potter sabrina the teenage witch uh, and this really cool series i discovered on netflix recently during the lockdown called the worst witch oh yes i watched it it's, it's amazing. amazing it's absolutely it's fun. amazing it's overall the cat mania has contributed well into the 20th and the 21st century so when the creator of the world wide web tim berners lee was asked for an example of a popular use of the internet that he had never predicted he answered kittens yes so actually according to bloomberg 15% of the entire internet is dedicated to cats and there are about rules 30 million google searches per month for the word cat that's just crazy <laughs> let's oh uh, look at the evolution of cat content over digital media uh, you know ever since the beginning of the internet so one of the pioneering content forms which i remember was lol cat and it is usually an image of a cat with text that is grammatically incorrect like if i fits i sit oh yes you remember that yes, right i remember this yeah Also the first cat video on YouTube was uploaded in 2005 by YouTuber co-founder Steve Chen who posted a video of his cat called Pajamas and Nick Trick. Oh god, we need to see this. <laughs> But one of the most famous cat videos of all time is Nyan Cat uploaded in April 2011. The video merged a Japanese pop song and an animated cartoon cat flying through space and leaving a rainbow trail behind it. Hang on, was it a rainbow trail or you know I always thought that the cat was farting a rainbow. That's what it looked like. <laughs> well, we shall see. We'll see. number 5 on the list of most viewed youtube videos in 2011 wow a website called cats that look like hitler it's a satirical website featuring photographs of cats that bear an alleged resemblance to adolf hitler wow and most of the cats have this large black splotch underneath their nose much like um, the mustache you have yep and with like this really stern expression Uh, we're going to show you some Hitler cat photos. <laughs> well, the keyboard cat is another internet phenomenon. It consists of a video of a cat called Faxo wearing a blue shirt and playing an electronic keyboard. Now, the video was posted in YouTube under the title Charlie Schmidt's Cool Cats in June 2007. As of today, it has 59 million views on YouTube. There are obviously thousands of cat memes, videos and famous personalities we can talk about, but we are out of time and it calls for another episode. I hope you guys had fun and uh, learned something today. We actually had a great time researching all of this. Um and uh, yeah, stay tuned for our next episode. It's actually going to be about cat behavior 
it's going to answer your questions about why they behave so weird at times why they ignore you why they don't listen to you how to get them to listen to you and all of this advice is going to be given by a professional cat behavior uh, trainer uh, and uh, yeah it's going to be fun i i hope that we learn yeah. something about training cats although that's absolutely <laughs> impossible so but let's just try we'll see you guys later and yeah. thank you so much for watching us in. yeah bye bye bye, bye.